Alright, what is going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host, Jan. I hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's video, which is a match review of Chelsea's 2-1 win in the Champions League group stage away at Lille in Northern France. Yes, indeed, Super Frankie Lampard has bagged his first European win as Chelsea manager. And what a win it was. Super important for the Blues. Tammy Abraham scored a goal on his 22nd birthday in the 22nd minute. Great finish. We're going to talk about that. Chelsea conceded on the set piece. Quel surprise, as the French say. But late on, Chelsea's Brazilian, who is likely to be leaving Chelsea in the summer, unless he signs a new contract, which is a whole controversy in itself. We won't get into that. Secures the winner and the three points for Chelsea late on with a volley hit into the ground over the defender and keeper assist Hudson Adoy, but we'll talk about that in a bit as well. Right, before we do the post-mortem into this interesting match, I want to remind you to subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit the bell notification icon because Football Therapy uploads every single darn day. I want you to keep up with the content, so make sure you subscribe and also like this video. So, this game was huge for Chelsea. They'd lost at home to Valencia 1-0 in a rather uninspiring game. They were away to Lille. I know Lille got beat by Ajax handily. And by the way, Ajax have absolutely set their stall out in this group. They've got two 3-0 wins. Absolute domination. They are absolutely favourites to win the group now. So, that's a concern for Chelsea. They... They are in sort of worrying territory in terms of they need something from one of the two Ajax games. But anyway, so Ajax were out doing their thing. And Chelsea were away at Lille. They had no points on the board. They needed to get something. Like a draw at the very minimum. But they got that big W. Lille are no mugs as well. And I want to talk about them and talk about the game. And talk about generally everything. So let's open the analysis screen. As suspected, Lille played between a 4-2-3-1 and a 4-4-2. Mainly a 4-4-2. Basically, they were looking to counter-attack Chelsea. Which they did at times, but not as much as they would have liked. One thing that I want to talk about with Lille is they had immaculate positioning. They let Chelsea have possession, and when Chelsea did have possession, they didn't press really, but they just had constant flowing positioning that blocked off the passing channels and the passing lanes for Chelsea, and it worked so well, and they deserve props for that. When they did get the chance to break and go forward, players like Osserman and Okone were a big threat, but generally, Chelsea dealt with open play defending quite well. So how did Chelsea approach this game? Well, in my match preview, I said, Frank will either play a 3-4-3 or he might go to a 4-3-3, probably not the 4-2-3-1. As suspected, Frank did play a three-back system, which was worrying. Initially, the front three of Chelsea wasn't really surprising. Tammy Abraham up front, some people speculated Giroud should start, including myself, especially in a three-back system with wing-backs, would have liked to see Giroud start. Turned out it was great Tammy played because he scored, obviously. Willian on the right, who also scored in the end, so that was a good decision. And bearing in mind, they've both been in good form if you consider Willian's performance against Brighton. Mason Mount on the left, which he wasn't amazing today, and we're going to get into that. Jorginho and Kante in midfield, which wasn't a big surprise. Marcus Alonso at wing back, left wing back, which wasn't a big surprise. But what was a surprise was Rhys James came into this game to play right wing back, with Cesar Azpilicueta playing right centre-back, the position he played in so well under Antonio Conte. And that back three was completed by Zuma and Tomori with Kepa between the sticks. Now, the back three I actually think played really, really well. Tomori, once again, was magnificent. He has been superb at the moment he got dropped into this team. Really, really good. He made like two small mistakes. One could have uh, caused a problem towards the end with that back pass to Kepa, but Kepa dealt with it really well. Well, he also had an excellent game, but Tomori was superb, he deserves a massive shout out here, his recovery pace is immense. Now Frank employed this 3-4-3 system because he wanted good recovery pace. He knew Chelsea are a better team on the ball, therefore they'll have possession, Lille they'll want to counter attack. So Chelsea need defensive cover on transition. That's why Frank went through the three-back system originally against Wolves, because he knew Wolves were counter-attack and he wanted recovery pace. Zuma, Azpilicueta and certainly Tomori, definitely Tomori, have a 
good recovery pace together. So Chelsea were more secure on the transition against Lille. Zuma actually had been worrying people of late in terms of his form, but he was a lot better today. And I think as Zuma's confidence grows, he'll be better and better. But in terms of centre-back partnerships moving forward, if Chelsea are playing a back four system, I personally would like to see Antonio Rudiger when fit partnering for Kaio Tomori. So Chelsea started the game very, very well, very dominating, and they got their goal on the 22nd minute. Birthday boy Tammy Abraham assist for Kaio Tomori, the guy I've just been waxing lyrical about. He plays in a good ball. Tammy stays on side. He gets the ball between his feet. He sorts himself out, does a wonderful finish. Superb goal. Very, very exciting indeed. Now Chelsea go on to dominate a large period of this first half. But the 33rd minute Chelsea concede via, guess what a set piece. Now in the full context of this game, this is obviously the issue and it has been the issue for Frank Lampard's derby and Chelsea. It's set piece defending, people walk into the area and get on the end of balls and they did that. It was a great header and it was a great finish by the Lille forward but still, it's whether you could blame it on zonal marking, whether you blame it on just passiveness from the Chelsea defence, something's incredibly wrong. But again, I always maintain this is a very coachable problem. Chelsea are doing all the difficult stuff right, but in terms of defending set pieces, which should be your bread and butter as a Premier League team, they're not performing, and that's something they could and should progress with and get better on. So Chelsea go in on the break one all, and it is kind of worrying, because although they've had chances, now they had small lapses of conversation, and you can see the collective confidence dropping after playing so well early doors conceding on a set piece. Obviously that's their Achilles heel, but they shouldn't really damage their confidence because it's a, not a reflection of how the game's going in open play. Frank Lampard does a bit of managerial pragmatism and changes the formation. He brings off Reese James, who was pretty good. He did get an early yellow card, which put him in a delicate position, but he kept his head and considering as a Champions League debut, and all these kids are going from development squad, championship, Premier League, Champions League, all in the space of like just over a year. It's a pretty like skyrocketing ascendancy. So they're hand handling themselves well. So yeah, he had a quite a good game, Reese James, playing at right wing back. But he comes off for Cesar Spilicuetas to go right back and Chelsea to play a back four system. Reese James coming off means Callum Hudson Adoy could come on into the left wing and Mason Mount drops into a midfield to complete a midfield three. This works great. Callum Hudson Adoy is an absolute weapon and he does change the dynamic of every game he's on. Now, he probably is frail defensively in many ways. Hudson Adoy, something Maurizio Sarri echoed, and even Conte, I think, as well, understandably. He's just a young kid, but he is a master talent, and as soon as he was on the ball, he he definitely gave the uh, Lille right back a very hard time. He put that, uh, I think it was actually a forward that went back to defend the uh, Turkish international. He put him on his ass. he cut in, he assisted Willian. Willian catches it on the volley, hits it into the ground, loops over the defender and the keeper, which is just an unsavable ball. Maybe a bit lucky, but I think when a ball comes in like that, you don't want to get underneath it. So I think he deliberately wrapped his foot around it, which means he stro strikes it into the floor, which is just excellent. So Chelsea are up 2-1 at this point, but it, <laughs> it still has sweaty moments. Like I said, they concede a few chances later on. There's a back pass to Kepa that he doesn't want. He can't clear it properly. It goes straight out to the opposition forward, and then he comes out and claims it. Kepa was actually really, really good in this game. He made a couple of notable big saves, but there was one time when he came off his line when the ball was coming in. His starting position was perfect. I think that's a really underrated element of Kepa's game, his starting position. He was such an important figure in this game. So in terms of great performances, obviously shout out to Kepa, Aretha Balaga, Fikayo Tomori. Zuma was pretty good, but you know, he was playing next to Tomori, who was excellent. Jorginho was pretty good as well. He's been solid. He's like our new sort of Azpilicueta in terms of a solid yeah, a weekly performer, and but probably for my money should be captain as well. And Golo Kante did actually look a bit rusty. He was effective and he was functional, but he didn't really look himself in this game. That's completely fine, but it's just worth noting. I think obviously his absence had something to do with that. Mount as well wasn't as effective as he has been. In the Premier League, he's Chelsea's highest ranked player on who scored, but the last couple of games he's been a little bit less effective as usual. The thing is, he's always in the right place at the right time. He 
caught the ball well, he's just a final touch. But in terms of functionality in the team, he knows where he needs to be, he knows when to press and when not to press, and he links up very well with Abraham. And you could even see that in this game, he's just not his top class self in this game. But as you can see on the graphic next to me with the stats, Chelsea generally had the better of it. A worrying thing was that Lille had more corners, and when Chelsea is so poor at defending set pieces, it is a bit worrying, but they got the W, it was a hard game, there was a hard place to go, they had like a whole massive amount of, or a stand of ultras, they had an atmosphere there, but Frank's young, inexperienced Chelsea, they got the win, they tasted the Champions League victory away from home, thanks to Tammy, thanks to William, thanks to Mori, thanks to Kepa, etc, etc. Right, there's a few more talking points about this game, so let's get rid of the analysis screen. Alright, Chelsea have got three points on the board, it does look like Ajax are going to dominate, but Chelsea is still in with a massive shot out of qualifying obviously they just need to develop a little bit more it, but watching the both games that Ajax played when they won 3-0 both times they do look vulnerable at times and they got a little bit lucky all the opposition got a bit unlucky I feel maybe at home if Chelsea can get three points against Ajax at home they'll be in business to at least finish second in the group hopefully we'll have to see I did want to cover a talking point in Christian Pulisic because he wasn't even named in the squad today now I don't know if there was a reason for that but in terms of just people talking about why he's not playing he's a new player a young player to a Chelsea squad who needs time to adapt people make the argument about Mason Mount's new to this team but people need to remember as well Mason Mount has been playing with a lot of these players for whole of his life he has the link up chemistry the understanding and he's been playing with the current coach for over a year and he's got it drilled into him and he's just acquainted to English football Pulisic is an amazing player very very talented very good on the counter-attack Chelsea were playing a counter-attacking team and they would have had the onus and possession to move forward we saw how good Pulisic was in the uh, Super Cup how good he was in pre-season for me from a tactician's perspective you can understand why he wouldn't have been included today because you need someone who's got the chemistry and the build-up play in possession which understandably Pulisic has not got at the moment people are always looking for stories but the truth is Christian Pulisic isn't a Frank Lampard signing it's like when uh, Antonio Conte came to Chelsea and didn't play Michy Bashwai. Michy Bashwai wasn't a Conte signing. He cost loads of money. 33 million is probably the equivalent of 57 million now, whatever Pulisic cost, in terms of how the market's gone crazy with inflation and all that. But having said all that, I'm not saying Christian Pulisic is going to be the new Michy Bashwai. I think he's a talented player. I think he's got a good attitude. And I think he can retain tactical information. He just needs to build a bit of confidence and learn the system a bit better. And he will get his chance. It's just up to Christian Pulisic to take his chance when he's given his chance. But at the moment, Frank Lampard's very much got an identity of direct attacking football, and people can see that. Everyone's complimenting Chelsea on what they're doing at the moment and where they're going, so. Right, what do you think? I want you guys to let me know your thoughts and opinions. Get down in the comments below and express your thoughts and opinions. Please like the video, guys, if you've enjoyed the video, and I wanna let you know so if you want to talk to me and the rest of the GOAT gang from Football Therapy, you can join the Football Therapy Discord, where the conversation never stops. You do it through Patreon, it costs $1, which is nothing. And yeah, you join the Discord server, talk to me, throw in some memes, throw in some football stats, just talk about Chelsea and football generally. It's a lot of fun. The link is in the description to join the Discord server. You can follow me on social media, at Football Yannick, if you want, on Twitter, and on Instagram, at Football Yannick. That's pretty much it guys, remember to subscribe if you're new and like the video and all that and you enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk Outline my lines, I rap through thought Body bag the verse, outline the chuck In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me baby